Hi guys, welcome! In this video, we'll dive into the PvP Fire Breath DPS build of Jormungandr, which is a new hero class coming this month in C, Global, and EU servers. Jormungandr has risen to become one of the top classes in China servers PvP and GVG setting. This because his Serpent Form's Fire Breath auto-attacks can bypass the high skill damage reduction buff in PvP and GVG maps, allowing him to deal massive AoE fire magic damage to multiple enemies. He even has useful utility skills that can clear the enemy's field effects, turning them into his own Serpent Domain and have high chances of inflicting abnormal statuses on enemies. We've already discussed all the skills of Jormungandr and explained his pros and cons in my previous video. If you haven't watched that yet, I have a video linked down below. This time, I'll cover everything you need to know from stats, runes, gears, cards, upgrades, and battle setup in order to optimize your Jormungandr's performance in PvP. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. To unlock the new Jormungandr hero class, you need to reach the Tier 3 Sorcerer Adventure class and use a job change voucher in the hero class interface. First, for attribute point distribution, max out int to enhance your raw magic attack, which is the foundation for calculating magic damage. Second is Agi for increasing your auto attack speed and thus boosting the frequency of proccing stack up skills. In addition, equipping the Dragonfly Star card and the Fluffy Tail item will boost your AA damage the more Agi you have. As for the remaining skill points, just allocate it on Vit for survivability. The other stats you should upgrade to further boost your damage are as follows. Although the attacks of Jormungandr deal fire, earth, and poison magic damage, the core element is still fire damage, so just treat the other elements as bonus damage. What's unique about Fire Breath's damage is it can be boosted by auto attack damage and AoE magic damage, but it's not affected by skill damage and spell crit, hence I don't really advocate investing on skill damage, spell crit, and luck. Up next, let's discuss the most important runes to get. For Acer Monument, these are the notes which are important for optimizing your Munganer's performance in battle. For advanced runes, it's important to activate a second line effect of all runes, maxing out his core passive skill to level 7. It will grant Jormungandr the ability to proc 3 different stack up skills and maximize its trigger chance when doing auto attacks. Aside from reaching 7 over 7 core passive, you'll also need to prioritize aiming for a high first line value on the following 3 runes. First is a lucky shield star rune for a higher chance to create a shield when casting or proccing plunder of faith. Aim for at least 50% chance as these shields can stack with each shield lasting for 10 seconds. Second is the Endless Misfortune Star Rune which boosts the trigger chance of Disaster Panic from 25% to up to 40% when it stack up. And third is the Desert Sandstorm S Rune for a higher chance to petrify enemies when proccing invasion. However, this cannot ignore the enemy's petrify immunity. As for the remaining 3 runes, it's of lower priority to aim for a high first line value. Just activate their second line effects to reach level 7 core passive. And then for attribute runes, prioritize leveling up the following for improving damage. Up next, let's dive into the recommended equipment set and cards. In PvP, your Mungander can be built numerous ways. However, my preferred strategy revolves around enhancing Fire Breath's damage outright when in Serpent form and then proccing Vars abnormal statuses when in Human form. First for weapon, Jormungandr's exclusive weapon Tomb of Bloodscale would be the best option when in Serpent form since it doesn't only boost his damage output but also extends the duration of his Serpent form. Additionally, its tier 5 effect grants the ability to negate any magic damage and magic reflect you receive when in World Serpent form, significantly improving your survival. Here are the materials for crafting and synthesizing his new weapon. Your weapon should be enchanted with high status resist, and inlaid with any of the following cards. I prefer using Doppelganger Star card for additional damage per second and Fire Lord Cow card to inflict burn status which reduces the target's fire reduction. When in human form, you can switch to Frost Book inlaid with Stormy Knight Star card for improving the chance and duration of freezing enemies. For offhand, get a Demon's Hunter trophy with 30% Ignore MDef as main equipment and a Peak Platter as phantom equipment. Your offhand should be enchanted with Insight 4 and inlaid with an Ore Spirit card. 
For armor, I recommend getting an other Sure Patrol with 20% elemental damage as main equipment. As for the Phantom armor, you may use the Chosen's Gown to protect against fear. But if you already have high fear resist, then just use the Star Shatter's Gown or Magic Abyss for extra magic damage modifiers. Your armor should be enchanted with high status resist and inlaid with any of the following cards. If going for a poison build, use a Chimera Star card and Flower Demon Valley Lily Tail Item combo to proc poison status. Before we continue on, I'd like to give special thanks to the sponsor of this video, Smalwen. With years of experience in the industry and partnerships with various game developers, they offer top-ups for a wide range of games at competitive prices, including Premium and BCC for Ragnarok Mobile. Smalwen Top-Up is available in many countries across all servers and you may pay via their trusted payment platform. In the Philippines, I can pay securely using my GCash via Alipay and receive the BCC instantly. Please do check out Smilewan's pricing and payment methods using my exclusive link in the description box below. Her garment is a warm manteau with 12% AA damage as main equipment and golden manteau as phantom equipment. Both garments should be enchanted with arcane 4 or high status resist and inlaid with Dragonfly Star card for more AA damage or Devil Squid card to be able to attack while hiding. For foot gear, you may use any of these shoes but I mainly prefer Tristan's Grace with 6% magic damage as main equipment and White Gem Boots as phantom equipment. Both foot gear should be enchanted with Arcane 4 or High Status Resist and inlaid with Moonlight Flower Star card for higher movement speed or Edgar Star card for permanent endure effect. For accessories, I recommend using Heart of Molten Essence with 12% fire damage as main equipment and Flame Feather as phantom equipment to maximize your fire breath damage. All accessories should be enchanted with Anti Mage 4 and then inlaid with any of the following cards Smoky Star card for hiding, Horn Star card to detect hiding enemies, or Greatest General card for boosting damage. For headwear, these are my top picks for each slot. For head, use a High Refined Witch's Oath or a Night Feather Crown, inlaid with a High Wizard Katarina MVP card for maximum damage. A good alternative during human form would be the Wave Knight to reduce the enemy's status resist. For face, a Dancing Flame enchanted with Insight 4 would be the best in slot to inflict burn status. For mouth, I recommend using Shape of My Heart when in Serpent form and Clamor Cane when in human form to inflict stun. For back, you may use either Brunhild or Wrath Greasy Fallen Feather for a chance of doubling your damage and try to get inside 4th Enchant. Invasion and Snake Poison triggered by auto attacks can proc the Lex Eterna debuff on the target. And lastly, for the tail, get a Fox Herald or Fluffy with Arcane 4th Enchant or the Flower Demon Valley Lily if you're going for a poison build. Take note that you may also use GVG Rental Gears, God Artifacts, and 6v6 Team Competition Headwear for specific situations. Up next, here are the other upgrades that you can invest in to further boost your damage. For pets, you may use any of the following pets depending on your preference. For guild buffs, prioritize maxing out the following offensive stats. For Oracle Mirror Extract, there are plenty of options for both attack and death attributes, so just select any of the following based on the stat you're lacking and your budget. For Ancient Relics, there are several possible options to just choose depending on your playstyle and budget. Horn of the Unyielding to prevent being one-hit killed by burst damage, Horn of the Watcher to attack hiding enemies, Chaotic Blade for a status-focused build, Lord of Vain if you just want an overall increase in damage, or Valkyrie's Blessing for FTP players. For multi-drop, you can unlock the following classes to get more stats. And for Adventure Handbook, just focus on collecting items and achievements that grant magic attack when unlocked or deposited. Finally, let's take a look at some tips for using your Mungander in battle. First, for stack up skills, I prefer placing Disaster Panic for boosting damage, Invasion for petrifying enemies and additional source of damage, and Plunder of Fate to steal MP and buffs and to protect yourself from debuffs. For 6v6 League skills, I prefer placing points on Nature's Grace, King of Chaos, Battle Instincts, and Berserker. Here is my setup for the manual and auto skill bars. Once you're all set up, use the following consumables which can help boost your damage. Before attacking, place first a Serpent Domain near the target to reduce the enemy's status resist and to petrify the enemy player's summoned creatures. Also make sure that there's a Serpent Domain near you when you attack to further boost your damage output. After that, transform to Mortal World Python and start launching Fire Breath auto-attacks which will proc stack up skills and snake poison. 
if targeting tanks and supports, you may petrify them first with beam erosion before performing fire breath auto attacks. Don't forget to pass through the enemy's field effects to convert them into your own serpent domain. Once the Mortal World Python form has ended, cast Space Time Barrier and Stealth while waiting for the skill cooldown. Keep in mind that you can teleport using Singularity Warp when chasing or escaping. You may transform again into the Mortal World Python form whenever your HP is low as it double your max HP and restore it to full. If switching weapons, make sure to equip first a Tome of Blood skill before casting Mortal World Python, otherwise you will not get the extra duration and magic immunity effects. So that's it from our Yomungandr PvP build guide. Overall, Yomungandr can be a force to be reckoned with in PvP when built properly. How about you guys? Do you think Yomungandr is good? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Alright, that's it for this video guys. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would love for you to consider subscribing by hitting the red subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching and see you in our next episode.